She has been called Canada's Michael Moore for her opposition to the establishment. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with journalist Linda McQuaig about her book, The Trouble with Billionaires. In the opening pages of your book, you put into sharp focus just how much a billion dollars really is. Would you mind elaborating on this for us? If you were to be given a dollar every second, which is quite nice, uh, then after 60 seconds you'd have $60, after an hour you'd have $3,600, and, and after 12 days at that rate, all day and all night, you'd have a million dollars, 12 days. But in order to become a billionaire, you'd have to keep that rate up not just for 12 days, but for 32 years. So the book is called The Trouble with Billionaires. What is the trouble with billionaires? What's happened is, in the last few decades, virtually all the income growth has gone to the top. What problems stem from having super rich in society? Probably the most basic problem is that it undermines democracy. When you have a, a class of people with that much economic clout, that translates into enormous political clout. In fact, in terms of upward mobility, the United States has one of the worst rates of upward mobility among the developed nations. The truth is, you know, if you want to get ahead, if you want your children to have a chance at improving themselves in life, you're much better off to live in a Scandinavian country. You know, if you want to live the American dream, move to Sweden, it turns out. How is the problem solved? I think one idea that really kind of captures sort of what, what is possible is the idea of introducing an inheritance tax, and it would only click in after someone had received $1.5 million. You could receive $1.5 million in inheritance tax-free, but above that you'd pay a small, gradually rising tax. There would be enough revenue from that to fund educational trust funds for every Canadian child, so that every Canadian child, when they turn 16, would have $16,000 deposited into this trust fund to be used exclusively for education or training. Think of what that would do to change the lives of Canadian, Canadian young people. How has wealth distribution changed in recent years? The simple truth is we, we're paying our top people 10, 20, 30 times often more than they were getting decades ago, than their counterparts were getting decades ago. We're not getting any improved performance. I mean, that, that's the striking thing. And you, you actually can measure that quite quite easily. I mean, you know, back in the 1970s, Hank Aaron was the top baseball player and he made 200000 which was the top baseball salary. Today, the top baseball player is Alex Rodriguez, who makes $28 million a year. Even if you adjust for inflation, Rodriguez is making more than 30 times more than Hank Aaron made. He's got 30 times the incentive, but he's not performing 30 times better. In fact, there's no evidence he's performing any better at all. Explain to us the discrepancy in taxes paid by the ultra-rich today versus yesterday. In the pre-1980 period, we had marginal tax rates, both in Canada and the United States, that went as high as 80%. In fact, for some years, they were 90%. Now, the top marginal tax rate in Canada is 46%. So it's like half what it was then. One idea I've seen you discuss on this issue is the idea of philanthropy. Could you tell us your take on this? If the question is, should the rich give money through the tax system, or should they give it through philanthropy, is that if they give it through philanthropy, they call all the shots. They determine where the money goes, and they determine to a large extent how the money is spent, what the priorities will be. If we tax them, and that money is collected and put into the public pot, then the democratic electorate decides how that money is going to be spent. And if we're a democracy, which we are, that's very important. Thank you very much. Thank you.